Welcome to Module 3 for the North Carolina Extended Content Standards, Mathematics Instructional Implications. The information in this module is intended to support teachers in the implementation of the 2017 Extended Content Standards for students with significant cognitive disabilities. The training is sponsored by the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and conducted by the Center for Literacy and Disability Studies, a unit of the Department of Allied Health Sciences at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This module will focus on the instructional implications embedded throughout the mathematics standards. We will discuss the expectations that continue to be a part of the standards and focus on three areas of emphasis, promoting student thinking, communication, and conceptual and procedural knowledge. The new extended content standards can be found on the Exceptional Children's webpage under Disability Resources. Scroll down to Significant Cognitive Disabilities and then select North Carolina Extended Content Standards. Numerous standards have been changed so that they are more clear and concise and a discussion of these changes can be found in Module 1. However, many of the underlying instructional implications remain the same. For instance, we know that in order for students with significant cognitive disabilities to make progress in mathematics, they must be given experiences and opportunities to learn. The North Carolina Extended Content Standards require that students have instruction in domains such as operations and algebraic thinking, measurement and data, geometry, and statistics and probability. Instruction on all the grade level standards continues to be an expectation. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics and the Common Core State Standards suggest that effective teaching must support students so that, when given a problem, they can make a plan to solve it and check their answer. They can use numbers and words to help them make sense of problems. They can also use words, signs, or symbols to explain their thinking. Effective instruction needs to support students in recognizing math in everyday life and using the math they know to solve problems. Teachers must help students learn to use math tools such as pictures, drawings, and objects to help them explore and understand how math is used in the world around them. Effective instruction also support students in learning to work carefully and think about how to solve problems correctly. Additionally, instruction should help students learn to see and understand how numbers and shapes are put together as parts and wholes and notice when number patterns and calculations are repeated. The 2017 Extended Content Standards continue to support these effective instructional practices. It also continues to be true that in order for students to meet the standards, a variety of instructional strategies must be utilized. Teachers should balance their emphasis on skill and understanding, and across lessons, students should engage meaningfully with math activities and the adults and the peers in the activity. Many instructional practices continue to support the new extended content standards. However, there are some practices that have been emphasized throughout the changes that were made. One such area of emphasis is around promoting student thinking. An example is illustrated in the change of wording for kindergarten, counting and cardinality, standard one. The previous standard read, count forward using the one to 10 sequence. The new standard reads, use concrete and pictorial representations to count up to 10 items by ones. Notice that the new standard requires the student to count in the context of using concrete and pictorial representations. When we provide a context for learning, it gives students a reason to focus their attention. It provides interest and it gives them a framework on which to hang what they're learning, thereby promoting student thinking. 
Providing a context allows us teachers to utilize strategies that help students think about what they are learning. We can help them connect background knowledge, compare, categorize, and problem solve. We can ask questions to continue engaging the student in the activity, and we can get them to think about what they know and see how that can help them figure out what they don't know. So, throughout the new standards, you will find wording that leads to generalization, which involves being able to use knowledge and skills that differ from the setting, materials, and situations in which they were learned. One way of promoting student thinking is to use repetition with variety. When educators instruct using repetition with variety, students receive multiple opportunities to work on a target goal in different ways. This promotes thinking and problem solving. Rather than merely memorizing or recognizing information, repetition with variety requires students to think at deeper levels because information is being used in slightly different ways or for different purposes. Repetition with variety should not be confused with more common forms of repetition through which the same information is presented in the same way until students demonstrate mastery. Students with significant cognitive disabilities who are taught using repetition without variety typically have difficulty generalizing the skills they master to other settings or using the skills in a flexible manner. Repetition with variety is one key to ensuring that students with significant cognitive disabilities learn in ways that lead to the application of knowledge and skills in mathematics. Let's consider what repetition with variety might look like in math. Throughout the standards, students are expected to learn to recognize and use a variety of models, such as 10 frames, sets, number lines, and arrays. Let's use one of these, the 10 frame, as an example of repetition with variety to promote student thinking. When students first learn to use this model, they are learning about the numbers 1 through 10 and answering questions such as, what numbers fill more than the first row? If there are five counters in the first row and two counters in the second row, how many counters are there? And how many more are needed to make 10? Variety can be included by using the 10 frame to help them do other types of math work, such as making comparisons, understanding place value, checking addition or subtraction problems. It could also be used when working with functions or algebra problems. Again, repetition with variety is one key to ensuring that students with significant cognitive disabilities learn in ways that lead to the application of knowledge and skills in mathematics and promotes student thinking. Variety can also be introduced through the variety of ways quantity is represented. We want students to be able to apply their knowledge in flexible ways, so the extended content standards emphasize the need for students to be exposed to all forms of representation, concrete, pictorial, and symbolic, from elementary through high school. Using the idea of repetition with variety, a teacher may have the students working with concrete items while he or she demonstrates the use of the pictorial and symbolic representations. Or, as an additional example, the student may be working with the pictorial or symbolic representations and then check their work using the concrete representations. Getting exposure to all of the representations will support student thinking. Finally, it's also important to provide students with a variety of lessons using the various models and representations. The extended content standards are written so that teachers can plan a curriculum that values students, is engaging, comprises high-quality, relevant, and appropriate content, and promotes student thinking. Another area of emphasis in the new standards is that of communication. All throughout the standards, there is an expectation that students will communicate about what they are learning. It may be through asking and answering questions, participating in discussions, or collaborating with others. In order to meet these expectations, 
communication instruction must be embedded throughout a teacher's academic and non-academic planning. A primary consideration, then, is whether or not a student has access to words, signs, or symbols that can be used in flexible ways. If they do not, then they will need augmentative and alternative communication supports. In order to promote communication, it is imperative that all individuals, regardless of the severity of their disability, have access to their own communication system and be provided instruction that will help them develop versatile communication skills. For students with significant cognitive disabilities, this instruction has to permeate their school day and their life to the greatest extent possible. The final area of emphasis to discuss is that of conceptual and procedural knowledge. The extended content standards are written so that instruction must intentionally help students learn the concepts at the same time that they are learning the procedures. Take, for example, seventh grade expressions and equations, standard one. Use one of the four operations to determine if expressions are equivalent. In order for a student to meet this standard, they will need instruction both on the concept of equality and the procedures of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. When we focus our instruction on only conceptual or procedural knowledge, students may develop only partial understandings or even misconceptions. Marcus is a good example of how focusing instruction on only procedural knowledge has led to a partial understanding. Marcus is a middle school student who was taught the procedures of how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. He was quite good at following these procedures as long as someone told him which calculations to make. However, when he had to determine which procedure to use, he simply went through a process of elimination. First he would add, then he would subtract, and so on. He had no idea when it was appropriate to use these procedures. He was simply trying to match an answer. When our instruction focuses exclusively on concepts or procedures, it will result in students developing partial understandings or misconceptions that are not easily unlearned. Therefore, the extended content standards support teachers in balancing both conceptual and procedural understandings. We will pause for the activity. Please find the handout titled Instructional Emphasis. For further details about the changes made to the Mathematics Extended Content Standards, please refer to the crosswalk found on the same web page as the Extended Content Standards. This concludes the module. However, please note that there are three additional modules available that address other aspects of the new 2017 Extended Content Standards. They are Process, Change in Tools, English Language Arts Instructional Implications, and Universal Design for Learning and Students with Significant Cognitive Disabilities. Thank you for your participation. If you need additional information or have questions, please contact Matthew Martinez or Dreema McCoy at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction.